stand on behalf of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council that as a council, we highly recommend government's efforts at ending illegal mining, popularly known as Galamsey, in order to protect the natural resources of our beloved country. We want to encourage you, Your Excellency, the President, not to yield to efforts or pressures from any quarters to lift the ban on illegal mining. As a council, uh, we note that some of our nationals are engaged in legal small-scale mining. And we ask that the government expedite action on lifting the ban imposed on legal mining so that those citizens can return to their legitimate means of earning a living. But we also want to caution that when that is done, the laws governing their work must be made to work so that they operate within the parameters of the law. The important role of the chiefs cannot be overemphasized, given that the chiefs are present in every community in our society. The chiefs are the custodians of the land. And of course, because of the presence of the chiefs everywhere, they are able to know who are involved in illegal mining. It is important that we emphasize the need to enforce laws to the letter if we have to achieve success in this regard. And none of you may recall that in my remarks to you last year, I acknowledged that because ostensibly of the difficulties our nation had gone through in recent years, some amongst us had decided to find unorthodox means of keeping body and soul together. Galamse was one such means. As a result, illegal mining has been conducted on riverbanks and in our forest reserves, leading to the pollution of our waters, the degradation of our lands, the non-reclamation of degraded land, and the use of dangerous chemicals such as mercury and cyanide on the environment. I was the, of the view, a view shared happily by the majority of Ghanaians, that if we allowed it to continue, we would be jeopardizing both our present and our future. Our responsibility to this end is clear. In dealing with the menace, government set up at the level of the cabinet an interministerial committee on illegal mining with the world-renowned scientist, Professor Kwabna Frimpong in the chair, which at the commencement of its work recommended an initial six-month ban on small-scale mining activities, a request to which I assented. The ban has since then been further extended. Government gave directives to the committee to carry out certain activities to bring sanity into the artisanal gold mining sector. These included one, the launching of Operation Vanguard on 31st July 2017, a force comprising officers and men and women from the military and police service, tasked to prevent further pollu pollution of water bodies and land degradation. Despite the, the deeds of a few, Operation Vanguard has been to date a considerable success. Two, the training of small-scale miners in sustainable mining methods at the George Grant University of Mines and Technology in Takwa. 600 miners have so far been trained, and as of June, the 4th, 2018, 1,500 miners are receiving training in responsible mining practices. Three, a nationwide tour by the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs to solicit the support of chiefs, 
queen mothers, and other traditional and opinion leaders in the fight against illegal mining. Four, regular interactions between the Interministerial Committee and the Small Scale Miners Association to craft a code of practice for small scale mining operations. Five, the formation of district mining committees against illegal mining with clearly defined terms of reference. These committees are expected to address all issues concerning small-scale mining in their districts. The Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executives had already been informed about the composition of this district mining committees, which were duly inaugurated before the end of the first week of January this year. And six, the deployment of satellite imagery and drone technology to monitor the mining activities of illegal mining. Government also ratified the Minamata Convention on Mercury as the 40th state party. The objective of the convention is to protect human health and the environment from anthropogenic emissions and releases of mercury and mercury compounds into the environment. Let me at this point express my and the appreciation of the nation to you, our revered religious leaders, and our eminent queen chiefs and queen mothers for the support you have offered and continue to offer in the fight against Galamse. I was in the Western region for a three-day tour a little over a week ago, and I was comforted by the strong remarks of support by the chiefs I encountered who attested to the marked improvement in the vegetation and the quality of the water bodies in comparison to the situation a year ago. In spite of the limited successes chalked so far, it is clear that we have not yet defeated this menace. I know, however, that one matter at the heart of discussions is when the ban on small-scale mining will be lifted. Let me reiterate that the ban is meant to be a temporary measure until we're able to streamline and sanitize the small-scale mining sector. I assure you that shortly you'll hear from government a statement setting out a comprehensive roadmap, including the lifting of the ban, to deal on a permanent basis with this grave threat to the present and future health of our nation. The comprehensive roadmap will address, amongst others, the following activities. Reclaiming and reforestation of mined out areas. Restoration of impacted water bodies. Strict supervision of the processes of awarding mining licenses and associated permits. <clears throat> the establishment of a mercury pollution abatement project, the implementation of alternative livelihood projects, systematic control of the engagement of excavators and Chang funds in mining areas, and continued formalization and regulation of the small-scale mining sector. When the ban is lifted, you will have a responsibility as was successfully discharged in the days of our forefathers, to continue to help preserve our lands, water bodies, and environment. We all have a duty to say no to Galamse for our own common survival and the survival of those who are to come. If we allow it, we're jeopardizing both our present and our future. This cannot be overemphasized. And the statement of the religious spokesperson, which we've heard just now, will continue to ring, I hope, in all our years. <laughs>